Hi, matey. Morning, matey. We're yeah. up again. Off again. Up, good up good up night's again. sleep. Yeah, up mm. again early. and Well, we said we were um, done with the morning chats, but, you know, what happened yesterday morning, I really missed it, you know. Getting up and... Uh, Getting up having a chat with you by the fire. And I think a lot of people yeah. missed it as well. What do you, I think, what do you think? <laughs> this is what I'm hearing, you know, especially from uh, uh, Sabine home. Yeah. So people are questioning, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what's going to happen now. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, but it's been a great time in the mornings to have a chat, hey, you know. Yeah. Fresh, birds chirping and... Mm. And, uh, and it's all natural, yeah. Mm. You know. Yeah, because yeah. we thought we might do a, a chat last night, maybe a night chat, but the sky's black and dark, yes. it's it's not the right mood, you know what I mean? You've got to do it in the morning, eh? Well, everyone's waking up, you know, you early mm. birds, mm. and uh, uh, the day's fresh, the day's young, you know? Yeah. It, it's just, just waking up itself. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful, yeah. And it's so nice to hear the birds, the, the little iPhone picks up the, the bird noises real well, eh? Does it? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yep. Mm. And so we've got, um, yeah, well, what I was thinking is, um, you know, we, got, we were talking about last night, we're going to, Jake's going to set up a YouTube channel for you, and uh, and so you can keep doing these videos yourself with Sabine at home, can't you? You know, like some of your damper and chats and... You better keep doing them. About cooking and still about the bush life and yeah. a little bit of history and <coughs> where we're at and where we're going. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, it'd be good. Like I said, I'm not much on all this tech stuff, but yeah, you guys and Sabine can sort of show me. Yeah, we'll get you set up a bit, and then there'd be experts on out there watching, and listening. So yeah, that'd be and honest. I think um, if we did a Facebook page as well, there's a lot of people on Facebook. Imagine if they could post onto your page there, like they get up at 5.30 and record a minute of the bird sounds and they post it on your page, you know? And everybody can see that, like in everybody, all the different yeah. parts of Australia, you know? That's it, that's it. They could uh, and ask questions, you know, if they've got a question for you, they can, you know, they can put some questions to you and then you can answer them on a video, eh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, it's, it, it's all about just honest, discussions so on and it's 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 not about negative and there shouldn't be anyone attacking each other or anything like that you know they, yeah. they need to be deleted straight away because this yeah. is just uh about life you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh no, that would be good also you know if people want to question me on s some of the things that we talked about uh, uh a little bit on history and bush and mm. Mm. What it was like growing up and all that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Another thing, I've, like, obviously we're in, sort of on holidays, you know, now. Working holiday, I suppose. But, you know, for the last 15 days, you know, it's been a purpose of mine to get up 5.30 to come and have a chat to you, you know. Yeah. But yesterday when we said that's, you know, we'll, we'll do, that, that'll be it now because we thought that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. But I was lying in bed awake. I wanted to get up, but I was like, well, I don't have to now, you know. Yep. So I didn't have that little purpose that morning, you know what I mean? And it was different, wasn't it? it and was, normally, yeah. you know, when you're working, you've got to get up, go to work, you know. But yeah, but yeah. I really noticed the difference of having a purpose to get up and not having a purpose. And mm -hmm. people, you know, you, you, you do need a purpose, don't you, in life? If you don't have a purpose, you're just, you're lost, you, you know. You do, you do. You know, yeah. why do we, why are we born, you know? Why do we come into this world? There, there has to be a purpose, mm, mm. you know, and um, uh, but you, you, you've got to enjoy it at the same time, enjoyable, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get up and uh, seize the day, I suppose they say, don't they? You know, get up and um, definitely, yep. But if you yep. made it your purpose to get up early and see the sunrise, and because um, it, it is, it's you know. Then you see nature in its purest form, and it and nature inspires you. Mm. I think that will help your day, won't it? You know, it does. It you does. get inspired by nature. It does. You know, there's uh, millions of people that prefer to sort of get out into nature or want to and can't get out into nature. 
but you've got to break that cycle. You've got to make that effort to whether it's getting up early or go, going for a walk or just sitting quietly by a fire and just listening all the mm. birds around you. Everything's mm. waking up. It's it's fresh. You can smell the freshness and, mm. Mm. and that. You know, it's just it's just a wonderful feeling. You know? Yeah, yeah. I suppose even if you're in town or the city, you can get a little, you know, you can get a little fire pit and you can light a little fire and make yourself a, a coffee, can you? Yeah, that's right. That's even right. if you're in town? Uh, yeah. And yeah. there's still a lot of birds in town, but, isn't there, you know? Yeah. <coughs> but even things like this, you know, people feel they're a part of it. Mm. They're, just, they're, mm. they're watching the fire and they're watching us just discussing, uh, things and uh, they hear the birds and mm. so what happens is it's uh, they're coming out of this sort of a lot of them do stress out you know a lot of people there's a lot of worries and so on mm. so they come into this space which we created mm. as something more uh, uh, natural mm. and healing I suppose you know it's just yeah yeah maybe calming too definitely you know yeah and where are we right now we're about at 160 kilometers from uh, Broome hmm. we camp right alongside the, the Fitzroy River hmm. that feeds into into the ocean just down here yeah. And uh, uh, this is where it's got flooded out, you know, because as we drive out, then um, people will see through your videos, uh, Drifter, that um, uh, how much force it took to take out all those roads and embankment and that, you know? Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, because they're still working on here. Yep. Yesterday we come through Fitzroy. Uh, crossing which is three four five hundred kilometers uh, east and down the low level crossing and the bridges where the guys were working on mm -hmm. that'll take another two years uh, and now we're down on the bottom end of the Fitzroy where it sort of floods out more yeah yeah so we would have been this would have been totally underwater here yes yeah. totally yep I mean the um, Water was just lapping the lapping the bridge. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Down here. Down here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because you can see how high, how mm. low the the water is. Hey, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, we found a good little spot here, isn't it? Like it's um, we just turned off, you know, on the broom side of the bridge and turned down a little track and mm. found this beautiful little place. Hey, it is. Hey, haven't seen yeah. anyone and just a little paradise, you know. It's yeah. I had an idea there was a, a spot back there where people sort of camped up, but I wasn't too sure that you had these tracks come off, you know, mm. off here down at the river. And, uh, and there was a tree that was down, which made it hard to get through, but that's why well, no one had really been down here for a while, eh? No, no, that's it, you know. Yeah, a bit tight uh, coming in, so getting out will be the same, you know. Yeah, they might chop a few branches off. I think so, yeah. So it's and today... All cars. Yeah, we've got enough scratches, haven't we? Oh, yeah. And today we're going to get to Broome, so that's been a big sort of, um, yes, you know, I've spent three years in Broome, and, uh, you know, the reason I came to Broome originally, because I listened to a John, I listened to all Johnny's songs, John Williamson, and yep. he's got a song, I think it's about the Kimberley, and it says, um, there's nearly half of Australia over there in WA. That's true, isn't it? There's nearly... Nearly half Australia is in WA, and when I heard it that, yep. I travelled around the world, Europe and America, and all around, you know, the East Coast, and I realised I'd never been to WA. Just when okay. I was about 20, 24, I thought I've got to go to WA because how can I be an Australian and not been to WA? You know, that's right. Yeah, it's half half our country there, and it's yeah. that's right, isn't it? There's so much over here, isn't there? And it's huge, expansive. Um, country this side too, you know, mm, it's, it's mm. uh, big as Queensland and, and bigger yeah. and, and some, you know, you've got a lot of distances between um, small townships, mm. but the coastal <coughs> is beautiful, same with the inland, you know. Mm, mm. Mm. And you reckon the average bloke could, um, if 
to do the canning stock route? Yeah. Easy, yep. eh? Yep, easy. Get it, you know, get your vehicle checked out and make sure you have plenty of water, EPIRB, sat phone mm. with you and, uh, uh, and there's a lot of traffic on that canning stock route. Hey, you mm. know, we run into quite a few mm. um, individuals and small groups. Every day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much every day. That's it. So, yeah. always someone's there to help and so on. But main thing is, you know, if you break down, just stay within the vehicle. Don't even try to attempt to walk, you know. Mm. It's just too harsh in yeah, the country. Yeah. And not, you know, don't do it in wintertime. You can't do that in summer, eh? No, nah, you've got to do it in wintertime. And, uh, How much did you pay for that little Hilux? You remember? Something around 40. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's... Is that uh, with the canopy? No, no. Yeah, plus the canopy? No, no, everything's added on. Yeah. So it's just a basic um, Hilux 4 b 4 Yeah, but you haven't got a tune. You haven't, have you got a lift kit on it? Uh, a lift kit, yeah, put yeah. a two-inch lift kit on it. I'd uh, say that's the most important thing you need. Just If you had a stock Hilux or a stock vehicle, put a lift kit on it. That's it. And... and uh, and the other important thing is have a good look at your ties, you know. Yeah. Don't take what the um, tie fitter recommends. Yeah. <coughs> there are a lot of good looking ties yeah. that go for something that's um, steel billet radial, um, good sidewalls, yeah. and probably 10 to 12 ply. Yeah. So it give you, it'll still give you a cushion, but you can let them down a bit more yeah. than, than the softer ties, you know. Yeah. But yeah. that's why you're not sort of getting a lot of spike, spikes and sticks. Yeah, like a light truck tire, eh? You can yeah, get them, Yeah, mate. definitely, definitely. That's go for that, you know, if, if they can, you know. And a bull bar and UHF and, um, you know, communication is really important, isn't it? You know, we're always on the UHF. Definitely, you know, yep. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, you've got to be organised. You have to be organised in the back of that, don't you? Like, if you want to get your billy out, you got to be able to find it, don't you? So you have to have a bit of a storage system, eh? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. You can't just chuck everything in the back, rattling around, you know, nah, think will break. Nah. And Everything's got to, got to have its place, you know? Yeah. yeah. Your water, your tackle box on the side, so everything's there, your cups, your billy. Yeah. So when you pull up for lunch, you can just pull it out and yeah. uh, everything's there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, little footstool, you know, me and Downey, since the last couple of nights, we're yeah. just pulling out a our foot still sitting on that with a straight back, you know. It is. It is. We've um, yep. been influenced by you, mate. <laughs> That's all you need, actually, isn't it? That's all you need. It's, yeah. it's so comfortable, and uh, like you said, it's just you're sitting up straight, and uh, uh, the others are nice, you know. But there's a time and a place for that too, mm, you know. Mm. Yeah. And you've just got a plastic tub with your bit of gear in it, and then um, a little ingle fridge, you know. So. You don't need much, but you you need you need a mate to come with, don't you, on the canning. You can't do it on your own, really. No, no, you need you need a couple of mates, really, you know. Yeah. yeah good mates that... Uh, you can depend on, uh, and rely on. Yeah, all in tune, and it's, it's just about enjoying, uh, not debating or arguing or anything like that, you know. Yeah. 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 It sort of spoils the trip if, one, if one's not happy and uh, mm. get into an argument. Yeah. But the um, sure. main thing, and, you know, set up your... Um, so it's handy to have a solar, you know. Yeah. 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 Have two batteries. Yeah. That have a solar system set up for your light and for your to run your fridge mm. 24/7. It's just yeah. Um, uh, makes it, you know. Yeah. 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 And and um, and, uh, and the rooftop tents, you know. Yeah. Like with uh, what you guys build there, the um, they're they're a couple of minutes, say, you know. Easy, just undo, the, undo the four clips hmm. and it just um, um, lifts straight up, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can fold them down, they're dust proof, um, they're well made and, and light, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's good to have a good sleep, eh? And it is, get up there, and have a good sleep, and it is, you know, yeah, in yeah. the room for your blankets, it's been, been cold, isn't it? You know, <laughs> that's it, you know. Yeah, you just got to make sure you don't have too many, otherwise you come tumbling down that bloody ladder again, you know. <laughs> yeah, too many wines or beers. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. But look, that's that's it, you know, people just, um, and they have, they got to do it, you know, just, they, they must, um, 
um, you know, seeing the photos and the, and the talks and stuff, uh, yeah, it hopefully inspire a few others to get out, you know? Mm, mm. Yeah. And there's also, you know, Colonel Warrens is halfway. You can, there's like a, you know, um, there's a, there's a, you know, all weather road in and out of Kuna Warrigi. So you can sort of do halfway, can't you? We met one couple who, from Tamilis, and uh, they went from Waluna to Kuna Warrigi, Yep. Half the track. Yep. And then they went across to Headland and up to Broome. Mm -hmm. And then come back down, down the uh, the top half of the track on the, from north to south, you know. So they did it like a figure eight. So yeah, that's yeah. not a bad way either, because it gives you a bit to, um, you know, look, the full track in one hit is, is a long way. It is. But it that's is. you know you can do just half the track, can't you? you know? Yeah, yeah, you Easy. can do that, and that's a that's a good trip to into um, <coughs> Port Hedland. But between uh, Coon and Warriji, you've got another community which is Punmul. Yeah. Then you've got a Telfer mine. Then you've got uh, Woody there. You hit the bitumen there, mm. but you've got the Oak over and all those rivers there. Yeah. A lot of places you can camp by. <coughs> by the river and uh, uh, just just walk around, just have a look, mm. you know. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Then you've got Marvel Bar. Yeah. Which is, I think, about 150 k's from uh, Port Hedland. Uh, that's got a lot of history. Mm. And uh, little small town and uh, uh, a lot of character, you know, a lot of old buildings. And stuff. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's worthwhile. And it's also, um, I mean, Getting out of here also supports the towns, doesn't it? Because we noticed in Derby, it's um, you'd, you'd mentioned that Derby's slowly sort of, you know, it's, it's not bustling like you remember. It used to be bustling and now it's very quiet, not much happening. So It has, you know. Yeah. If you're out there, at least it is supporting the towns in a way, isn't it, you know? Oh, definitely, you know. Yeah, go in and have a look at some of the shops, you know, and say good day to your locals and because uh, uh, they're full of information, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and same with... Uh, if you're thinking about fishing those, you know, like we went after those locals mm. at a huge um, Mulloway, mm. and a small one, then a couple of crabs. Mm. Go and have a chat with them, you know, they, they, they were fun, you know. Mm. Yeah, they mm. sort of tell you exactly what they're catching there and yeah. what yeah. are they using and, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's nice and, and you've got to do that, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it, and it's also, yeah, tra travelling's about who you meet, isn't it, too, you know, and the experiences, and mm. it's good to sort of, um, like we met Adam and John, and, you yep. know, it's, it's nice to have our space every night, you know, yeah. on our own, but it's good yep. to touch up with them, too, and Adam's yep. a character, wasn't he? Yep, oh, he was, he was. You know, we'll, we'll keep in touch with him, you know? Yeah, that's good. But, you know, people got to uh, get out of their comfort zone. You know, in, in the cities, you're locked away and, and you don't sort of speak much to your neighbour or other people around. But out here, you know, you, you've got to... Uh, a lot of people are shy. Mm. Sometimes you've got to make the first move, you know. Yeah. Good night, mate. How are you going, you know? And, mm. and what's happening? Or what are you catching, you know, like yesterday, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It just opens up and you see the big smile, and especially mm. that old guy, you know, he mm. was, he was pull, pulling in the, the line. Mm. So, you know, and that's a good way to uh, uh, build confidence in yourself, yeah. is to get out of your comfort zone, yeah. you know, go and talk to different people. and Connect with people. That's it, you know, yeah, mm. yeah, no, it's fantastic. Because we are like, we're herd animals, aren't we? Like, we're meant to be around other people, aren't we, you know? We are, we're no different, eh, you know? Mm. Yeah, we look for groups these other individuals um, that uh, I mean look I like to be by myself but I'm comfortable anywhere everywhere you know yeah and yeah. Uh, but there's time and a space that you, that you need for yourself and uh, and by all means do it you know yeah 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 and back to the truck I think um, if you if you really if you got a nice vehicle a lot of people got a nice vehicle you know mm -hmm. um, some some sort of protection. You can get your stuff goes on the side, eh? You know, like side protection, like you just can. contact adhesive or like that's a good idea in it to put something on the side on the canning because it does scratch your truck up a bit. I know a it lot does. of people don't want to get a scratch on their car, you know, but yep. you can get a wrap or something like that. 
Mm. And that, once you got that, it's it's easy, isn't it? You know, it's no problem then. It is. It is. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah. your truck might have been say, say sixty grand. You know. Yeah. Forty plus the canopy, mm. bit of gear. That's probably. We paid one forty for that. Okay. Yep. And it probably cost us nearly two hundred or if you added Kaido's time because he did a lot of work on it. He spent months on it. Probably nearly two hundred. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the point is. You know, well, it took, I'm now 50 and it took me that long. I've been wanting to do the canning, you know, all my adult life. And yep. I'm, it took me 25 years to get here. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> you, don't, you, don't need, you don't need a flash rig to do the canning, eh? You just, probably no, the less flash, the better, you know, just good tyres and, because well, you don't need power. You're just putting along, aren't you? Well, look, you know, um, a couple of the vehicles we saw was um, Hilux's, old, old mm. Hilux's, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, even some of the 80 series Land Cruisers, they're, they're good vehicles. Yeah. They're solid. They pretty well stand up to anything. Mm. <coughs> and uh, if you do, do your preparation mechanical wise and get it all checked out properly, you know, mm. do your wheel bearings, uh, uh, your universals, uh, put in a new one and make sure it's all grease and. Uh, and a good suspension and it'll get you there. Mm. Yeah. I think that's probably the main thing too, get a, a good mechanic to have a good look over it, you know, yep. especially wheel bearings and stuff, you know. Yeah. And uh, if you've done that, then yeah, you shouldn't have any problem. The biggest problem is trying to find a, a bloodwood log every night, isn't it? Oh, or a it. Uh, desert oak log that yep. you can uh, have a good fire. That's right, you know, because when you, get, when you get out to the whoop whoop, you've got a uh, Yiji uh, tree uh, burns well, burns good. You've got a bloodwood tree. You know that's um, that's the old logs mm. that's laying around. You can pick up and mm. and uh, ironwoods. Yeah, yeah, and your mulgus, the good solid mulga too. You know, mm. yeah, mm. yeah, they burn well. They burn all night and in the morning when you get up, the coals are still there, mm. Mm. and it doesn't take much to get the fire going. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. so. Uh, yeah. So and a couple of um a couple of Kiwi boys would be good to take along too, eh? Yeah, yeah. You need a couple of good fellas that can have a laugh with too, eh, you know? Oh look they're a magic, eh, you know? Yeah. Yep. And uh and uh it would have been an experience for those guys, you know? Yeah, yeah coming from New Zealand and or both of them and, yeah. and then one's based in Sydney. Yeah. With all the <coughs> concrete junk all around him and uh, mm. and he's getting out here and uh they were starting to sort of rough it, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. definitely out of Glenn's comfort zone. I mean, he's done some good trips, you know, but, um, yeah, you know, he hasn't done anything like that. And even in the in the disco, a lot of people were questioning the disco. Yep. I've seen the comments, a lot of people said oh, it's too, too electronic, you know, too many, too electronic for the canning, but it's no problem at all, eh? You didn't, it really didn't miss a beat, eh? Oh, I was impressed, eh, you know. Mm. I've always stuck with, um, Land cruisers, yeah. mainly because I, I got to know them pretty well, mm. and I never thought much on the Land Rover, the Discovery Four that he had, and um, yeah, it looked poshy, yeah. but it bloody handled uh, the track well. Yeah. You know, going up some of those steep uh, sand dunes, uh, just idling up and, mm. uh, and down, and uh, it's probably just driver error that got stuck. He got stuck twice, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> probably, <laughs> and. Uh, no, they're, they're nice vehicles. Yeah. And uh, like Brendan said, you know, it, it rides well. Yeah. It's smooth and... Uh, yeah, comfortable. Yeah. To the back of my mind, the only thing uh, I was thinking about the, all your electronics, mm. you know, your sensors flashing or coming on. What are you going to do out here? You know, you're a thousand kilometres from anywhere. Mm. And, mm. Uh, but they're well, well wired and... Uh, mm. So mm. nothing coming loose, you know. Mm. Yeah, they're well done. And you, you said you had a, a, a Land Cruiser Ute before, like one of the V8s, did you? Yeah, yeah. The 79, same as yours, but a single cab, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, I put a canopy, spare tyre racks, everything on it. And, um, oh, it, it was nice, really nice, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Just that I thought... Been living in town in the city in Victor Harbour, and I thought, oh, yes, it really cost me a lot more to, to run around town. Yeah, so I'm better yeah. off going for something like this. That's the reason 
yeah. while I went for this, you know? Yeah. And you like yeah. in the auto? You, you think that's, um, like I, I noticed on the track, I was changing gears a lot. Like it's a lot of, yeah. a lot of work changing gears. You're up and down, first, second, third, back and forth. Mm. Whereas autos, it's a lot easier, isn't it? You know? It is, it is, yep. And once you work out, it's just buttons. Mm. then everything was straightforward, you know. Mm. Yeah, mm. it's, uh, uh, you've got your power modes, you too high, four low and all that, and then mm. you just press, and when your dunes coming up, I was sort of hit, hitting them at, um, uh, in high but low, you know. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. I think the, um, and what about um, women? They'd, they'd have no problems getting out here on the track, eh, you know, because, um, yeah, that'd be oh. fine, eh? As long as they can have a bit extra water for a shower, I reckon. I think that's all it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's... Um, even just have a face wash and a, and a, a towel bath, you know, that's mm. to preserve water, because you, you've got to try and hang on to you, especially in the mid mid part of the, the, the travel, you need to hold on to your water as much as possible, you know, as, mm. Yeah, mm. as you're coming on to... But there's places where you can pull up and there's water holes, there's uh, a couple of windmills mm. along the way where you can uh, pull up and have a bath or a shower, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well there was at least half a dozen wells where the water would be perfect for to grab a shower, right? To grab a bucket of water and have a shower. Oh, definitely. Easy, you know, yeah. And, and save, save your water, you know, just mm. for emergencies, you know? Yeah. yeah. And the thing is too, you know, if a woman comes along, like Darren, you know, we talked about different roles, like, yep. if I'm feeling hungry, I, I look to Darren, I'm like, I'm hungry, you know, what, what do you got? But if, if we get a flat tyre, you know, she looks to me, doesn't she, you know? Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. ask her to, if I break down, or i got to set up the tent, or um, i got a problem, or navigation, I'm lost. Yep. Yep. She's gonna to look to me, but if I, if I'm feeling hungry, you know, so like, for example, a woman, you know, as long as your man's got a, a good rig, you don't have to worry about any of that, you know. You no. just, um, you know, just come along and support but, him, and uh, it's easy, you know. Yeah, but look, everyone's got a role, you know. Mm. Yeah, mm. the women are specialised in uh, kitchen, and so on. Like a man will help him cook too, you know. Yeah. And, and, but. That's that's their speciality. So you're better off leaving them alone. And uh, <coughs> and uh, Druni, she's she's part of the crew. She, yeah. you know, she's she's a person. You don't even think that she's uh, she's a woman. You know, a woman can go off and do their thing. But um, we're all a team. You know, mm, and mm. everyone helps each other out. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we get out and I, you know, we race off and grab logs and I get the chainsaw out and drag a log over, covered in ants and, yep. you know, we, that's our job and then I get charcoal for her and then I set the kitchen up for her and then, and when I'm all done, I'm like, is that, is that all, darling, you know, is that it? And she's like, yeah, that's it. Then I can sit down and edit my video, send to Jake, you know. But, that's it. That's but then, it. then she can sort of, you know, she's got everything she needs. All she got to do is cook some dinner and, yeah, yeah. You know. and, and it makes it so much easier because... Uh, with the drifter equipment and camping gear that you set up for uh, cooking, uh, utensils, uh, it's so simple, you know. Mm, it's mm. A, yeah, you got to you got to have a little table, like a little coffee table, uh, stool, and uh, 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 cooking gear, and and they fold away so neatly, you know. That's mm. that's what we're saying about if everything's sort of packed properly, mm. and that's and that's guy's job. Yeah, yeah, is to make yeah. sure everything's in place and yeah. all the women can say is, oh, where's this, you know, mm. off here, you know. I think that's a good thing, you know, we, we were joking about it before with the Kiwi boys because they had a lot of gear packed in, but because it was all, you know, <laughs> they couldn't find stuff, you know. Oh, and Glenn had asked, I'd asked Glenn, have you got this? And he'd ask yep. Brendan, where's this, you know, and they would dig for it and they'd find it. But, yep. but I think, you know, if, if you're trying to prep for this trip, get a day where you can just sit around and, and ask each other, you know, your partner or, you know, where, where's a cup, grab it, you know. You've mm. got to be able to get it within 20 seconds. You've got to know where it is. That's it. If you want a zip tie, you've got yep. to be able to get it, you know, because yep. if you're fumbling around trying to search for stuff, what happens you get frustrated? 
and then you sort of, you know, if you're trying to find a bit of black tape and you can't find it, you get frustrated yep. and then, then you panic a little bit and then what happens, you, you forget, you know, then, then you get flustered, see? Yeah. And then you forget to close your the canopy door or you forget to put something away and leave it on the track, you know? That's it. So it's really important to be, you know, everything you need, you can just grab straight away and you know, and also it goes back in the same spot, you know? Yeah, it does. Like if, if somebody, borrowed my you know if, so, if they grabbed something out of my truck and they didn't put it back in the right spot you know that'd annoy me you know what i mean because that's right yeah because yeah. then you know where it is for next time like even my yeah. little torch it's got to be in the same spot so i think yep. that's important eh? oh definitely definitely you know it's like uh <coughs> say five say ten minutes we can be packed up and gone mm, mm. you know because everything goes nicely into its place and um Main thing, they're not getting damaged. Mm, you know, if you've got gear scattered all over, something will rub or, True. or or dent and... Uh, yeah, because it can get broken or... That's, that's it. Uh, that's why it's important of just stacking things in the way it should be, where it should be, and how quickly you can uh, get it out and how quickly you can pack up, you know? Yeah. That's, that makes the trip. Yeah, enjoyable. <coughs> yep. Nothing worse than, uh, oh, this is damaged, oh, this is broken, you know. And mm, mm. Our bladder, water bladder is leaking and so mm. on. And you've got to protect all those things. Yeah. Yeah. And I reckon I can get you a um, <coughs> a lighter little coffee table than that uh, log of uh, desert oak there. <laughs> that thing weighs about 15 kilos, doesn't it? I know. It's <laughs> so solid, it's, eh, you know. It's yeah. been with us uh, at least half the trip, hasn't it? You know, I've, I've sat it there next to your, st your footstool every morning and is, or yeah. each evening and uh, yeah, I'm going to cut that up into chopboards, eh? Yeah, yeah. So we're it was gonna... cool because where we camped, it was laying down on the ground and then I said, oh yeah, I'll, I'll cut a piece off and just see what, yeah. uh, what's it like, you know, but it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, solid timber, eh? Yeah, yeah. All right, mate, well, we're heading to All Broome right. today. It's only a couple hundred k's and... Um, Yep. Yeah, your daughter's there and your little grandchild, and so it's going to be great heading into Broome and those beautiful colours. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to um, seeing that Cable Beach, you know. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yep, then we'll get a photo of all of us, uh, Karen and uh, young Banjo and Doug, and then uh, put it up there. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so and that'll be the. See, that's. Uh, that'll be the end of the trip then. But yeah, it. like I said, we're going to get, uh, we'll organise a, um, because you basically haven't got social media, but we'll get you set up between Jake and Sabine. We'll get you a, you know, YouTube page and somewhere where people can reach out to you and say good day and, and maybe share it. some of their stories and yep. share their mornings, their sunrise and uh, ask questions. So we'll, we'll set that up soon and then YouTube where you can keep chatting if you want to, you know? Definitely, you know, definitely, you know, yeah, if people are doing their own little trips they want to put it put it up there just to let everyone know where uh where they're at and, mm. and uh, yeah it, it's important to keep that connection going you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, uh, looks no, like the truckies good. are truckies are starting to run aren't they i know yep they're up and they've made their coffee and yep on the road eh definitely yep <laughs> all right I'm thanks richard all right mate yeah no it's good mm. oh, yeah. Okay, just a quick tip about these ladders. These are sort of such an important part of your rooftop tent. And it's important to be really careful with them because if you sort of, um, sometimes they get a bit dusty and gritty, a bit sand. If you get sand in there, it makes it hard to close. All right? But that's why the bags, the bag's really important. And the main thing is don't force them, you know. If you get, get it where it gets a bit stuck, if you end up, you know, forcing them, they can sort of bend and then you won't get them away and then your life will turn to crap. Because, but yeah, these bags are really good. And if you are, you know, what I do too is, even if you've got to give them a wipe down every now and then, all right, and um, give them a wipe and a little bit of silicon spray. That's really important that that um, ladder is looked after. Another thing, I was just talking about these soft shackles and something I wanted to mention for a while but this is actually a it's a 16 mil rope from Thailand <clears throat> and uh, Downey's mum makes them for us so I was over there with Downey and uh, with COVID and all that Downey's mum was 
who works in the markets in Bangkok, sort of out of work. So I taught her how to make these soft shackles. And um, yeah, Danny's mum has been making them. And uh, I went to the factory, local factory. What's it called, the factory? Uh, barbarian rope. Yeah, barbarian ropes in Thailand. And I got this this rope, but I really like it because one of the things is for these top, that's a 11 mil, that's a no, that's a that's a 12 mil, that's a 10 mil basically, mm. right? But it's very stiff because what's happening in here, all of these fibers are coated. If you pull a fiber out, right, they're all coated. See that? They're coated before it's woven. But with the Bavarian rope, it's not coated, okay? And the coating gives it it does give it uh, durability, but also it makes it stiff, right? And when you get the thicker, the thicker shackles, um, they're just too thick to really use. So what I like about this, so I organized with Bavarian Ropes to custom make this coating just for what I wanted. And then uh, Downey's mum makes these, and that's a 16 mil rope. So that'll, that'll pull 30 ton. Like I think we will, um, we rated them to uh, 26, 28 ton, isn't it? 28. <clears throat> some that we packaged, we, we actually, it, yeah, 28 ton. Um, some of the packaging says 24 because we wanted a 24 and a 28, so I just said 24, you know. But these are a 28 ton shackle. And uh, we've made them a little bit bigger as well, okay? So when you're trying to join ropes and get in and out, and the other thing too is it's so easy. See how soft that rope is? It's beautiful and soft. And uh, we, we also put this little sleeve on it. There you go, 28 ton. They've been rated, so we got this sleeve, which you can put that through there, and that uh, helps protect it also. But this is a great shackle, made from Downey's mum in Thailand. She sends them over, and uh, we give her. You know, she used to make at the markets about five bucks a day, wasn't it? Or a week, was it? No, a day. A day, five bucks a day. Five bucks a day, up at four in the morning, working all day selling food on the street and I've been given it 10 bucks to make one of these and she sits on the ground and uh, she makes these all day and Darren's dad helps as well and um, yeah I mean if we could sell some more of them it'd be great because it's you know we don't make a lot out of it but it's help supporting you know Darren's mum in Thailand and yeah she sits on the on the floor cross-legged and she's got a just a big old spanner and uh, I showed her how to do it and uh and the important thing of making these is getting that knot nice and tight and look at that like she does an amazing job you know i mean i probably couldn't even do it that good anymore but yeah i taught her how to do it but these you know a lot of the shackles are a bit small and i love these ones that are nice and big you know so if you're you know trying to hook up you know it's just so easy to use so that's my main go-to shackle look at that whereas some of these, you know, you're trying to, look at this, if you try to open that, it gets a bit stiff. What you've got to do is you've got to pull that out of there, open that right up, and then do that. See the difference? Okay. That's had a bit of pressure on it, so it's tight. But, whereas the, the tie rope, right? look at that, so good. Anyway. It's on the website, Thai Soft Shackle, 20, 28 ton. We've got stock, and if we run out, we can ring down his mum, get some more. All right. Yeah, we're top little spot here on the, <clears throat> the Fitzroy. Just on the broom side, and there's a little track, and oh, there's heaps of space down here. Yeah, so we're looking, going, looking forward to getting into broom again. Like I said, it's been three years there, and then went back once. 10 years ago and uh, yeah, got some good friends there, now I mate Brian who I used to work for and uh, I'm going to catch up Brian, he's away till Monday and my mate Peter Hoymans from Melbourne, he's going to be there. Steering unit as well. 
I did lunch with that old truck, big old troopy, and yeah, it had a fairy overdrive, so you could get in fourth and you whack it in overdrive. That was really good. I never had a turbo, you know, and uh, oh, I drove that thing all over Australia, and um, all I used to dream about the whole time was was having a turbo, you know, because. Um, I used to work down Headland a bit, like I was saying, and uh, I had this caravan, bought a caravan real cheap, and, and um, thought I had a you know, good cheap caravan, you know, I got in, and, and um, there was a bit of, uh, you know, I thought I bought a caravan, you know. Yeah, so anyway, there was, under the table, it was a bit damp and mouldy, so I pulled that out, and then I was, the seats, you know, where you sit, was a bit damp and mouldy, and so I pulled that out, and, and then, the roof, a bit of the roof was damp and mouldy, so I pulled that out. And, you know, after about half a day, I pulled the whole caravan out, literally the whole thing. It was all just rotten, you know, and threw it all in a big pile outside in the in the pin, the red pin there. <laughs> and um, I was like, holy shit! I've just bought a caravan. I've just pulled the whole guts and everything was out. All you could see was the inside. On the inside was the outside shell, you know. Anyway, but I uh, rebuilt it and um, made it nice. And, yeah, I used to tow it to Port Headland for work, and um, you know, we're heading down to Headland towing these vans back then because we were living in the van. We lived in a tent for the first oh, four months. We lived in a tent over summer at the um, at the church grounds, and yeah. Anyway, heading down to Port Headland. Um, you always seem to get a headwind, you know, and uh, the old 2H motor, the best I could do in the headwind was 60 k's an hour, and between here and Headland, it's 600 k's at nothing, just straight flat road, stinking hot, we had no air conditioning in the 47, and summertime, stinking hot, and uh, 60 k's an hour, you know, it's like, oh, you imagine how long I used to dream of having a turbo. And people were putting turbos in the old truck, you know, in, in like the 80s and the hundreds. Uh, a lot of hundreds of people would buy an aftermarket turbo and put it in, you know. But, um, yeah, you know, a lot of my mates when they were young, I had the um, Falcon panel van, but a lot of my mates had a Holden V8 you know, and just the sound of it. I remember Timmy Mendham and Colgate, they all had Holden V8 Utes. And uh, so I really wanted a V8 for a long time when I was a young fella. But I got a panel van, six cylinder, and then when I got me 47, I really wanted a turbo, you know. Years and years, and um, yeah, imagine driving a headland on 60 k's an hour. Anyway, finally, you know, I got the 76, which had a, uh, a V8 and a turbo, so I thought I was pretty lucky then. But uh, yeah, tough days back then, you know very hot and I was, I was working in Broome too and well I come into Broome literally like this uh, had no battery in the truck um, all tires in the back had nowhere to stay and um, so what I did the industrial state see here on the right I'm pretty sure and I went around the industrial state and I um, just called into every single place on the industrial state panel beaters whatever you know I said I'm looking I'm just in town looking for a job you know and I used to go around there every day and then um, yeah and I, I, um, I don't think I've told them I was telling the Kiwi boys the other day I went to um, there's a place in town they were building uh, a bunch of units and right in the middle of broom and uh, so we're in there and there's a bloke called Boxer um, Paul Paul Eaton everyone called him Boxer and he was a builder and um, I asked him for a job, but I had, you know, cowboy shirt on or, you know, a shirt, a big black hat, jeans and cowboy boots, you know, and um, and on the second day I went in there, he said, mate, if you're looking for a job, he said, you look like a ringer, you know, he said, lose the hat, because you're not going to get a job on a building site when you look like a ringer, you know, that's what he said to me, so I went, all right, and, you know, but up to then, I, I had been working on the stations, and anyway, so I, I lost, took my hat off, and um, and uh, I went there the next day again, looking for a job, you know. And he, he wrote down a, um, a number. He said Brian, and his number. 
Um, still remember his number too. And he wrote down and he said, give this guy a ring. So I went and rung, I rung Brian and Brian said, yeah, I'll get a bit of work for you. And uh, yeah, worked with Brian for a couple of years then, 16 bucks an hour. And um, just me and Brian, you know, and uh, yeah, we'll hopefully catch up Brian. He's away today, but he's back, back Monday apparently and he's a, a tough, tough old bugger. Born and raised, or he's from Perth, I think, but he's spent a lot of time in Broome. He was a builder. And you know, building up here in the northwest, and it's all cyclone country, you know. So we were like building over east. It's like it's like kid stuff, you know, really, because uh, it's all you know, just pine, which is nice and straight and light. Like pine is so light, whereas over here, it's all it was all heavy steel frames, all welded frames, and um, and hardwood trusses. It was all back then. It was Jarrah Jarrah hardwood trusses. All rough on Jarrah. You get splinters in your fingers. And uh, the battens, you know, it was uh, 3B, 3B2 hardwood Jarrah battens, you know. That's, I don't know, they must have a lot of the timber in because bat the battens, um, you know, uh, were about five metres long. And um, I remember trying to get two on your shoulder to carry them. It was bloody hard, you know. And uh, anyway, me and Brian, yeah, we did a lot of work together, a lot of work down in Headland. Now, I hated, you know, Headland's, yeah, I didn't like it down there because it was so hot and you know I come to be in Broome you know but um, there was just no work and I yeah I left I left Brian after a while and um, wanted to go out my own like I said and uh, but in Broome here we um, I teamed up with another chippy Gary his name was in town centre and um, yeah there was just no work those days you know and we'd go around uh, all the builders, we, we, we knew all the builders and we'd just both drive around every morning to uh, asking all the builders, you got any work for us, you know, like almost begging, you know, and uh, sometimes, you know, most of them say, no, nah, i got nothing. Sometimes they'd say, oh, look, can you finish this deck for me? Or, yeah, can you do this for us? Got some balustrade, but just little, little shit jobs, you know. But we did that for six months, you know, just driving around. That's how hard it was to get work and we'd only get sometimes three, sometimes four days work a week. It was rare we would we'd get uh, five days work, you know. And uh, But down the headland there was heaps, you know. So that was, that was tough, you know. And because um, there was a lot of builders in town and they, you know, they had all the work lined up and it takes time. And I was not real experienced either, you know. Although I was pretending to be a subby, I had a bit of experience, but not much, you know. And um, that was also tricky, you know. I remember... Um, Colin, there was a big company in town, Colin was the boss, were two brothers, I think of them later on, and they were doing this um, big job right in town, like a, a big government building, and um, Colin Ware, no not Colin Ware, Colin, um, yeah, anyway, it was a big building company in town back then, and uh, he got me to swing these um, big timber double doors, you know, and I'd never done it in my life, and he, he asked me, could I swing these doors for him? I'm like, yeah, no worries, mate, of course, I can do that. Anyway, I got it done, but um, it took me a little while, and uh, I was so nervous, because you used to... Just four-wheel drives, eh? Yeah, mate, yeah. It was, um... This Roebuck Estate was only just starting back then. It was a, it was a midgy. Midgy, see here on the left, there's all the, um... That's the um, Roebuck Plains, you know, and on a, on a full moon, the midges there are just like crazy. All the broom people were like Roebuck Plains, they'd want to live out there, so it's the midgy heaven, you know. But, uh, yeah, I loved it here in Broome. It was just a bit of a free, easy going town, you know, really suited me, and. Uh, if we go left out that roundabout, that should take us straight into that Chinatown, but I don't know if this was here when you were here or uh, changed. Yeah, no, I remember Chinatown down near the post office, so yeah, right out, we'll head down there, eh? Yeah, head down there, then when we get in uh, Middle Street, we just yeah, turn right and just follow uh, Finder Park, come we? Welcome on the road. 
in here one time at the shopping centre. It's right in there. And um, I was just in there shopping and I come out and there was... Um, the guy had a jerry can of petrol on his roof and it was, it was leaking and it was running all down his windscreen like petrol. And um, running down his roof onto his bonnet. And I'm like, shit. I sort of went up and had a look. I was like, that's petrol. You can smell it a mile off. And so I jumped up there and untied the jerry can and um, and uh, did it up, you know. And then he come out. And he sees me on top of his roof. He's like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, mate, your bloody uh, petrol's leaking. He's like, oh. Yeah, he wasn't. Anyway, he didn't even say nothing. But um, I was just in there. All right, we're going to find a park and we're going to go and get a coffee with Richard, eh? Yeah. In Broome and uh, Richard's uh, been shopping. Yep. Look at that. For grandson, so... Little Banjo's going to love that, mate. Yeah, he turned five about three, four days ago, so... Uh, yeah. He's going to love that, so, uh, yeah. See all the well, little must, goodies in there. And... Must take him down the pier then, eh, and go fishing. Oh, I think him and his father are already talking about fishing, eh? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go get our coffee, eh? Yeah, I'll put these in the vehicle and we'll wander down. Yeah. Happy birthday, big boy! Hey! <laughs> Whoa! Look at <laughs> like that! Cool. Yeah, cool. This is not even heavy. Well, it's super light. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a look at it's a Shimano it's a, too, mate, and a yeah. tackle box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what it is. <laughs> what does nothing in oh, oh, you know, like that. You'll be gentle. Oh, look. Oh, I didn't even got baby. You know what? How about this one? Yeah, I've got a little bit of for you. Yeah, I've got a little bit of 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 a little Little Shimano. That's good. Yeah, That's good awesome. Shimano. Yeah. What's in there? Oh, oh. what's that? Show us. What is it? Oh, oh shit. Wow. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, show what I can do. I can <laughs> <laughs> Can you say thank you, everybody, for my thank present? You. Go give me more hugs, baby. Go get some hugs, please. And all those bitches. Just to get you them. Yeah. 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 Oh. That's it. Don't worry, I've got the spots for Monday. I've just got to fix a hole in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him that. He won't yeah. do that. <laughs> Tommy Tourist. Tommy. I'm going for a swim. Yeah, well, we made it, eh? This is Cable Beach and Gonna duck down and have a quick beer and, um, and then go and check into the motel. No more camping tonight, we've yeah. got a lot of washing to do. Darren needs a bit of pampering. <laughs> Don't you, baby?
first time I see um, see Ganthian points right up top there. And um, first rocked up Ganthian point in my old trophy. And it was like this, but it was like evening, you know, and all the locals were up on the sand dunes. And um, I was like, oh, because there's like 150 metres of beach. But I'll come down like around here, you know, and uh, we got a big barbecue, had even firewood. So we got down about here, halfway down, the only one here. Everyone was up, all the locals up on the sand dunes. And lit a big fire and got on the, on the have a few beers and uh, had a big heap of people with us. Had the back of a troopy full of, full of mates. Anyway, um, about nine o'clock and we're all dancing around having fun. The next thing is wave wash straight over the top of our fire. Put it out and we're like, shit, what's going on here? Anyway, of course the tide has just come racing in. and So we packed up real quick and threw everything in the truck and scuttled back to the sand dunes. And then we, uh, ever since then, we were back in the sand dunes with all the locals after that. You know, they would have been sitting up there watching me. Because I was there for like a few hours. They would have been just saying, oh, look at this idiot, you know. He's going to figure it out soon enough. And sure enough, I did. Yeah. Anyway, that's local knowledge, it's called. All right, well, we might have a quick swim. You having a swim, Danny? No. No? You can't swim this one. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> you gotta learn how to swim, all right? Uh, it's a perfect spot. Look at it. Okay, you can go. All right. Yeah, Adam, we're um, down to my last bed of beer, mate. So <laughs> if you could um, send me oh, send me another carton, Seven Low Street, Gloucester. That'd be good. Oh, look at that. Well, can't beat it, eh? Six and a half thousand kilometres. Done the canning.